Oh, I smashed into the camera, that's not really good. Oh, stupid. You can go over here for demonstrative, illustrative pointing purposes. Point, point, is that even in shot? Who knows? And you guys on the floor, SSD crew, I'm going to hold you. And today, internet friends, I've got some crinkles in my t-shirt. Ignore that, that's not very professional. Today we are talking about hard drives. How do I use them in the music studio, this music studio? I've got 28 terabytes in total. Yes, 28 terabytes of storage in the studio. Why and how do I, I mean, what? I've got SSDs here, I've got a spinny hard drive, two more spinny hard drives over there and a giant thing over here. And there's each with four drives in. That's crazy. Why? What do I? Why have I got so much space storage, data storage, and how do I? Why do I have so much? And where do I put various things? Do I put my content libraries on here or over here or there? And what do I do with video files and all that stuff? I'll explain. And also why I chose these particular hard drives. All of this in this video. I will try to keep the rambling to a minimum, but we'll have to just see how that goes. These are SSD, where should we start? Let's, in fact, let's start off with principles. No, 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 we're going to start off with what do I own, and then the principles, and then specifics. So I own SSDs. These are three SSDs. This is, I mean, these are, these are smaller. This is quite big, but it's actually an SSD. It's an inter, I mean, it used to live in a computer. It's an internal SSD in an enclosure. So it's big, but SSD, no moving parts. SSDs, I have my internal laptop drive, again an SSD. I have a spinny hard drive, and these two spinny hard drives off to the side over there. So I can go plug it in easy peasy. They live there, that's their home. They, they love it there, that's why I'm not moving them. Don't move a hard drive out of its home. That's why I also haven't moved the Drobo over here from its home. It lives up there, and as I said, you can see each of these bays. Now, let's start off with principles. How do I manage data? Let's talk about backup first. Backup. I use the 321 backup strategy system vibe. So three copies of all my data, two different mediums, and one offsite. The offsite lives in my parents' house, so I have a copy of all my data at my parents' house once every, say, month and a half, two months. I go to my parents' house and I get the hard drives, drive back over here and plug those hard drives in, make sure I've got a mirror of everything in the studio on my parents' backup drives, effectively. So I have an offsite copy at my parents' house. That's up to date, give or take a month or so. That's fine. The two different mediums thing, I don't really do. Um, I mean, normally what you do for two different mediums is have, say, one in the cloud and one on the site, but I've got too much data to upload it to the cloud, so ignore the two mediums, but I do at least have at least three copies of all my data. One off-site and therefore two copies on-site in the studio. And that's what the Drobo is for. This Drobo over here has, well, I mean, we'll come back to the drives in a sec, but this Drobo keeps a copy of all the data. So I've data scattered across internal computer drive, SSDs, spinny hard drives, and I have a copy of all that data on one mega drive, the Drobo. Literally one big mega drive, a copy of everything. So whenever I create some data, whether it's an Ableton project file or a sample pack or a tutorial course, or even just this film like right now, for example, whenever I create any data at the end of the day, I throw it on the Drobo. So I know at any moment in time, I have two copies of the data on the site. One copy on one of the hard drives and an additional copy on the Drobo. Copy number three once every month or two is at my parents' house. Excellent. Now let's look at this Drobo because there are many drives here and there's a reason for this. These drives are in what's called RAID configuration. I mean, it's, it's RAID handled by Drobo, so you don't get too much configuration over this, but it means that I have four drives here. I think there's four, yes, four drives here, but one of them's for redundancy, effectively. So if any one of these drives fails, the light changes from green to red. I therefore pull the drive out, throw the drive into a river, not into a river, dispose of it correctly. I pull the drive out, order another drive off the Amazon. The postman delivers the drive, and then the postman puts the drive, not, not I put the drive, not the postman. The postman gives me the hard drive. I go, thank you, postman. And then I put the drive into the Drobo, give the Drobo some time, and then Drobo does stuff, and then it's back to normal. So it means that if any of these drives fails, it's not a problem. All my data will be absolutely okay, because it'd be a giant headache if, say, I had one, because you can buy just giant hard drives that are, say, 16 terabytes. It'd be a giant headache if, say, that hard drive failed and I had to somehow copy 12 terabytes of data back onto it. So the Drobo 
manages all that for me nicely. It's called Raid, and there's some other speed advantages to having this Raid configuration. I mean, again, I won't go into this in too much detail now, but so in this case, I have four drives. Imagine four different sandwich slices. First of all, if any individual one fails, that's fine. I can just throw in another one and it reconfigures itself. But because I'm, say, I have four different layers, I can effectively write to multiple hard drives at the same time. So I'm not constrained to the speed of just one drive. I can split up the information and write to multiple drives at once, effectively meaning you can throw more data on faster. That was a horrible explanation probably, but if you are curious about this, because there's a lot of benefits to RAID, it's called RAID, and it's I find it interesting because I'm a nerd like that, and that's what's going on over there. But conceptually, that's not actually important for the Music Studio. What is important is that it's a copy of all my information not to every moment in time, but at the end of each day. Back up. Poom, pow. Next, my computer. You've seen these before. It's a computer. You know what computers look like. There's an internal drive, an SSD, and on the computer is all my applications. And that's about it. I have very, very, very little things on there. It's still completely full. I have very little other stuff on there. I just have a lot of applications. More particularly, that's not a sentence, in particular, plugins. I have, as you can see here, a lot of plugins. And whilst each individual plugin's not necessarily very big, it adds up, and it's not just the individual VST size, for example, it's the fact you have VST and VST3 and AU, and then you have all these application support files oftentimes. So my computer's, and I'm not exaggerating here, pretty much entirely full, 250 odd gigabytes, with applications. I don't keep my Ableton projects on there, I'll come back to that soon, but I don't keep my Ableton projects on my laptop. It's basically just applications and a handful of other documents and miscellaneous music files that are tiny, but it's really just applications and the operating system on the internal drive. And that brings us on to SSDs. SSDs are solid state, so no moving parts. That makes them fast and reliable and tiny, really small. So these are much smaller than that guy, which I can point to. The downside though is these are much more expensive. So for the price of this 500 gigabyte SSD, you can get a three terabyte spinny hard drive. But the three terabyte spinny hard drive is slower, noisier, and less reliable. So I use these SSDs as working drives. So where I put my samples, my Ableton projects, my contact instruments, anything I need to make music is on one of these SSDs. And I have four of them, three of which are very similar. So let's put this one on my no, on my head. No, that's stupid. You being stupid multiplier. So I have three SSDs. They're all made by Samsung. 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 T3. T5. 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 Just a new version of T3. And they're the best. You can look at I cut a reviews and other reviews to conclude this as well. Or you can just believe me. Trust me that I've done the research and I concluded from other people that actually know what they're talking about. The Samsung T5 or T3 drives are the best. It's all you want to consider. So simply pick the size that works for you. 256 gigabytes, 256 gigabytes, and 500 gigabytes, gigabytes. Now, what do I put on each of these? I wrote this down because I can't actually always remember. Normally I can, but I actually rearranged all the data two weeks ago, so it hasn't fully gone into muscle memory yet. On dum ba dum bum bum on the rest, I, I mean, I knew this was the main one, the red SSD, Ableton Projects sample packs, or half of my sample packs, the most commonly used of my sample packs, and some miscellaneous contact libraries, these folders, as you see here. So contact instruments such as, say, Exhale. They're, they're, I mean, they're not gigantic, but they're quite big, and I do use these things regularly, and so they live on here. On the blue one, Superior Drummer 3, which is excellent. I, I love the thing, but it's huge. Superior Drummer 3 is I mean, it's nearest makes the difference, 250 gigabytes. So it needs its own solid state drive. So living on this blue guy, Superior Drummer 3. So when I want to use it, it's nice and simple. I just plug it in. And if I need to plug in multiple things at once, I use a hub, but I mean, I have many hubs over there, one over there, that's a separate issue. But it's, it's quite nice having it on its own drive. So I can just plug it in when I need it. On this, Ableton Packs, is that right? It is, Ableton Packs. I have all the Ableton Packs because I'm special like that. Be more serious multiplier. I have all the Ableton Packs because they're excellent and they take up a lot of space, as you can see, so they need their own little SSD. That rhymes. Ableton Packs are excellent. I plug this in when I need it, but as I say, this is the one I use most. It's where all my Ableton projects are and most of my, not most of my samples, half of my sample packs, but the most useful of the sample packs I have. 
on this guy. The, I'm going to hold this as well. On this SSD is, I think it's contact, isn't it? Yeah, but, but, but yes, contact libraries, the main contact libraries, the ones that native instruments distribute from Complete Ultimate, because I have Complete Ultimate. And again, they take up a lot of space, and that's why they need their own SSD, 500 gigabytes. That shows how big Complete Ultimate is. And they live on here, so I just plug it in when I need it. So yes, this doesn't get plugged in every session, whereas the red one does. But of course, it's easy just to plug two things in when I need it. As I say, I have hubs over there when I need it. Boom, so let's talk about spinny hard drives called HDDs. I call them spinny hard drives because these, the thing spins around a bazillion times a second and they make noise. So I don't actually use them for music production. I use these spinny hard drives, this tag team, tag team crew, tag team hard drive action crew. I use these guys for video work. On the left, three terabyte. On the right, four terabyte. Both Seagate drives, cheap and cheerful, the cheapest ones of Amazon, commodities almost. And as I say, these are my video drives. Now, before we get into the video stuff, I do have the other half of my sample packs on one of the drives. I call these third drive samples, even though it's that was back when I had oh, samples, sample packs split across three drives. Now they're on two drives, but I still call them third drive samples because then I know what that means to me. So I have half of my sample packs on that drive because they don't fit on SSDs. And these are the, the sample packs I don't use as often, but of course I still want to have them. What I should really do is buy another SSD or maybe buy a bigger SSD, like a terabyte one one day. What happens to them, I'm sure, is I buy another 500 gigabyte SSD and then I put those third drive samples on that. But for whatever reason I haven't right now, because um, they're fine, sat over there. As I say, I don't use them that often. I mean, I have, I, on this guy, I still have 250 or gigabytes of samples and that's plenty. I don't think you need more than that for the most part. And this covers all genres, all types of samples I need from Ableton projects, construction kits, samples, loops, all, as I say, all the different genres from tools through to finished loops. It's got, I mean, it's, it's quite rare actually I need to use third drive samples, but sometimes I do. That's why I keep it. And so let's move on to video. Is it just other videos? Yeah, but, uh, but uh, yes. So apart from that, I only use these spinny hard drives for video work. And I mean, it's, there's not too much to talk about there. I, I put some files on one, some on the other. So for example, archived courses, I put some on one drive, some on the other. Easy enough. But I suppose one thing I haven't mentioned is if I'm working on something, uh, say like this video, if I guess I'll use this video as an example. Once I film this video, what will happen is I'll press stop to stop the recording. I'll take the SSD out, plug it into the laptop and send two copies out, one to one drive, one to the other. That's because whenever I film anything, I want immediately two copies of that data. Yes, at the end of the day, I'll back all of that up to the Drobo again. So I'm still backing everything up to the Drobo. That's a whole separate thing. But even in the daytime, I want two copies of everything just because, I mean, sometimes I even just make mistakes. And I mean, I sometimes delete the wrong folder or I'll override something or, I mean, I'm always paranoid of files corrupting. It hasn't actually ever happened, but you never know. And I don't even want to lose two thirds of a day's worth of film because that's time and money. So as soon as I generate any video, I put one copy on one drive and one on the other, mirrored in these folders I call in progress video files or something like that. This folder here, you can see, and the same with editing. If I do half a day's worth of editing, half through the day, I'll copy that Final Cut or the ScreenFlow files or whatever, I'll copy that onto the other drive. So I have two copies of everything in the day as well. So I'm paranoid about backup. I'm, I'm paranoid about backing up and losing data, but it's also my job and important. Um, and I have made mistakes and needed my third copy of backup before. So it's not just paranoia. I've needed my third backup before. Just basically making mistakes, copying the wrong folders or deleting the wrong things by accident or just forgetting to do stuff. So it's, it's saved me many times. And luckily I can't remember any times I've actually lost any data critically. And that brings me on to this drive, this fun pointy Porsche design, close up. This the Lassie three terabyte spinny hard drive. This is a miscellaneous drive for sundry things. It's not a formal part of any of my workflows, but I have it. So I throw random things on there. Pictures of dogs and cats, not really, that's a funny joke. What I actually use this for is what I call safety backups or versioned backups of important projects that haven't been paid for yet as I go. So if I'm doing a tutorial course, and I mean, I'm backing up all the, in all the normal ways. If I'm doing a tutorial course, maybe every third of the way through the tutorial course, I'll take all of that information, throw it on here, right? 
version backup or day one, day two backup or something. Keep that as a version backup, and then it's just it's it's there for safety. Because for example, let's say for for example, even if I have everything backed up on these drives over here, maybe I make a mistake or maybe the thing corrupts. Again, I haven't experienced that, but maybe it does. Sometimes things go wrong. Maybe the screen flow documents corrupt, which used to happen a few years ago. So I'm, again, I'm paranoid about happening again. Maybe the screen flow, for, in fact, yes, that's a great example. Maybe the screen flow, which is the screen uh, screen recording software I use, maybe the screen flow document corrupts, and then I copy that from one drive to the other. So yes, that's backed up, but now I've backed up a corrupted version. So it'd be nice to have a versioned version of that from, a, 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 yes, a versioned version of that from say a few days ago on that drive. So at least, I mean, I lose a few days worth of work for that particular file, but at least I have it. Does that make any sense? So it's almost like these main drives are backing up the current version of whatever project I'm working on, but it can be useful to have almost a two day, or I guess, okay, yes, let's use specifics. It can be useful to have a version of that from two days ago and from four days ago, just a, the safety, effectively, uh, bumped into that. Again, I don't, I'm not that formal with how I use this as a backup. It's more when I'm going, rah, paranoid brain, I'm gonna lose all my data, I'm gonna lose a week's worth of work. I'm like, cool, let's make backup copy number five and just throw everything on here. And then I have more confidence in not losing the data. Oh, final bit of knowledge. How do I choose hard drives? How did I choose that the Samsung T5s were the SSDs of choice for me? And how did I choose those Seagate drives? And how did I choose the Drobo? There's the principle behind all this. And the principle is, now don't laugh here, I don't know what I'm doing. No, no, this, bear with me here, bear with me here. That's a funny joke to the serious point. I'm not an expert on hard drives. I haven't bought all of the hard drives. It's not my job to be an expert on hard drives. There are some people who have that job. There's five to 30 to 50 people in the world whose job is to know hard drives and to at every moment in time know which are the best hard drives, which are the most reliable, which are the best value, and they write about it. They put it in blogs, YouTube videos, various websites. That's their job. There are 30 people in the world, say, who know everything about hard drives, who are unbiased in their sort of opinions, and they tell people. So what you do is you find these people and you go, person who knows hard drives, which one do I get? And they go, this one. And you go, brilliant, I'll get it. And then you move on with life. So that's what I did with these. Everyone, the people that know said so the T5s, or what's the T3 now, the T5s, were the one to get. And when it comes to spinny hard drives, they basically say choose one of the main brands, so Seagate, WD, Lassie, or whatever. Again, it doesn't matter which of the main brands for the most part you choose. Pick one of the main ones. Pick a normalish size. Don't go too weird with your sizing in terms of three, four, five terabytes is fine. Don't choose seven or half or anything weird. Choose a normal size and that'll be the best value. And then just sort of pick the one on Amazon that makes the most value sense, depending on what the pricing is on Amazon at the time. Their commodities, don't expect them to be super durable. It's more how you look after them than their durability in general. So for example, if you put them in a backpack and run about across the field, they'll probably break, or well, maybe not initially, but if you do that a few times, they'll break. Whereas if you put them on a little station home like you see here and you leave it, and you're careful not to bash into it or drop it, it'll last a long time, a long, 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 long time. I mean, this guy, and it's moved house for three or four times. This is seven years old, eight years old, very old, very, very old, and it's still running fine, even though the reviews said it always breaks. So that shows that I think that people Either I got lucky or people are not very careful with these things. Remember the spinny hard drive, HDDs, spinny drives, spinning thing, moving parts, and that's what goes wrong. You can imagine that the people designing it made it really well so that if it's stationary, it'll just sort of keep going. I mean, it's a people, big, big companies, they sell lots of these things. Lots of R&Ds went into them, obviously. So if you look after them, keep them still, don't move them about, especially when they're doing things don't move them about, don't bash into them, don't, if you have a, a cat, don't let the cat sit on it. Just look after it. Like it was a thing you need to go after and it will be good for you. And again, but, 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 but for music production itself, not what you want, because these are noisy, get not really noisy, but noisier than you want. And they're slow, not good. These are silent and fast.
but more expensive. But that you don't for music production, you don't need that much storage space. For video, you obviously do. Um, I mean, the, I mean, look at here, for example. An archive course could be 200 to 500 gigabytes, and a working project for the course could be up to a terabyte or a terabyte and a half. So lots of space needed for video. But for music production, a few hundred gigabytes is fine. If you have a lot of sample-based instruments, like the content libraries, you'll need maybe a terabyte or two if you have a lot. But for most people, even just half a terabyte SSD is perfectly fine. It's not that expensive. And it'll make your life nicer. And you can get it in a lovely red color. I like the red. The red's good. Red is good. Good red. Good hard drive.